I hate when my husband works late, being at home, alone at night, hearing every little creak. It's uncomfortable. I thought I was just being paranoid. Then my girlfriend said she felt the same way when her husband travels. Until they had what she calls their Vivint talk. Vivint, my friend calls it the best home security system out there. It's super easy to use and fit right into our budget. And I love my video cameras. I can see what's going on in and around my home right from my computer or smartphone. It's actually kind of funny. I told my husband, if you're going to be traveling or working late, I'm getting Vivint. And it's made all the difference. Call now. Not only is installation free, you'll get up to $1,500 worth of Vivint security cameras and equipment today at no charge. Seriously, $1,500. Just pay as little as $99 for activation. Call 877-776-3430-877-776-3430-877-776-3430. Restrictions apply. 48 or 60 month agreement at minimum $49.99 per month required. Not available in Louisiana. See Vivid.com for license numbers. Blog Talk Radio. So I'm your host, Diana Belarus, award-winning author and best-selling author, The Journey of Transformation, Fire and Ice, and Ash and Ice, the saga. Today, I would like to talk about my book, my new book, The White Within. If you wish to talk to me and have your questions ready, the phone number to call is 1-347-324-3714. We can discuss anything about my book, or if you have any questions about other topics, I'll be more than happy to answer them. And I know some women uh, contacted me that they're going to call and ask, have some questions about domestic violence and all other topics I have been discussing. And there is one more thing I would like to uh, mention in this show today. There is a petition I created on um White House uh, website. It's injustice in the justice system. It's a petition about the mother who has never been able to uh, get custody uh, of her son because of some um, things going on in the judicial system and uh, she has been treated really poorly and I don't think this is... um, something we should stay uh, quiet about and I think we should support each other and when and help others uh, in uh, difficult situations and uh, from what I um, heard from her and uh, what she was guest on my show her uh, name is Sherry Safapo and she shared that uh, the child is in a really bad situation because the father is not a good father he's abusing his son and nobody wants to listen to side of the story so I would love for everybody to go to my Facebook page and uh, find the petition and sign it you don't have to give up all uh, your name you just can initial it and uh, nobody uh, can know what your uh, whole name is uh, for now we have about 170 signatures and um, I would love for you to support her to show, com- uh, to, uh, show confession and sign this petition so as I promised today, I'm going to talk about my new book, The White Within, what is the, the book about and why I wrote this book. And I'm going to read from my book and, of course, uh, uh, accept your um, phone calls. And if you have any questions, you can always ask me. And the book, uh, it's uh, currently in process of turning into audio book. So if you don't have time to read the book uh, on your Kindle, uh, on Amazon, it's available on Kindle, Amazon, and in, on paper, in paper version. Um, the book, uh, hopefully, I'm hoping I'm going to go over um, the narrator, um, uh, the producer, 
what you did on my book and see if there is any problems. And if it's not, the book uh, will be available in about a week on audible.com under my name, Diana Bauerov. You can find me on Amazon, Diana Bauerov. And you can find Fire and Ice, my domestic violence book on uh, buy books on the web with my uh, publisher, Infinity Publishing. So anyway, today we are going to talk, as I as I mentioned about my book, uh, The White Within. It's a book about um, my observation, what I have been um, um, observing all uh, all these years about so many things which happened uh, uh, in my life and uh, in the life of others. And uh, I am discussing everything here in this book. Of course, it's based on the radio show, um, uh, Empowering and Inspiring Women Globally. And uh, from uh, there is uh, some examples of um, what so far we have discussed on my show from other guests. So anyway, here is the introduction of the book, and um, I'm going to read it for you right now. It has been a long year of trying to change something, some things in my life which I feel are pivotal for the happiness of others. I never expected this to be an easy road, even for a minute. As always, someone has to take this road and use all of their knowledge to trigger this change. My observations and experience thus far have taught me to be more proactive and look at the problems we encounter from every angle. One of the most challenging aspects I have experienced in life has been some people's lack of compassion for others. It is baffling to me how some people can be completely unaware of when their actions hurt themselves and others. It is a very simple concept. Our behavior is so important. If everyone will grasp this, the world will be a much better place. Our world is always changing around us. It is completely different than it was 10 and 20 years earlier. Through technology, our world has shrunk. The perception of the people has evolved, and I believe it has reached the point where change is necessary to get your life in order if you're not living up to your full potential. Life throws so many urgent issues at us, sometimes on a daily basis. This can change the meaning of life for some people if it's necessary to It is necessary to value the limited time given to us. This is so important to every person and does not require special education or fancy technology. It simply requires compassion, a willingness to change. In my heart, I believe we are all born with this ability, but sadly, not everyone recognizes it. It is the love we hardly aware we have inside the inborn most important element that makes us humans because we are love and we must connect to it. When it comes to love, the example I have is that of my grandparents. No matter what life threw at them, everything was sold with love. And I was lucky enough to have spent so much time with them as I did for them as they did, for they molded me into the person I am today. I was blessed to have been afforded their love and affection. My time with them was the most amazing, memorable part of my life. Even when life was hard, love love was my constant companion, the foundation in my life. Memories like love cannot be replaced because both are invaluable, irreplaceable. When we accept this fact, we can come to realize that Like my grandparents, love is the heart of every solution to every problem. By using love to guide our thoughts and actions, we will improve the world around us. Let us awaken this sleeping giant with all of us so they may live in peace and harmony. Love is a crucial piece from the puzzle of life and is the base to begin the process of change. Let's all agree that this is what makes everyone happy. And that is what life is all about. If we want to have a better world for our children to live in, we must start making better choices. Choices based on love and kindness towards one another. When love is present in everyone's heart, 
then we things will start to shift and it will become more positive and less negative. So uh, I am talking about love here in my book, as you see, because a lot of people on my show, guests who have been coming, they have been complaining that they don't see enough compassion and love in other people's hearts and this is really the base where we should start the change we are all looking for and we should have to be more compassionate over the pain of others and then we will see uh, what we are looking for uh, and we will see changes and shifts in the right direction so this is something I I thought will be uh, the first thing I should talk about in my book, and uh, I think this is the first thing everybody should start to be aware. Of. They have it inside, and they should have to start to develop it in order to change the life of others and uh, see a more positive uh, positivity around and of course when you treat somebody with respect with love with compassion and show it to them then they're going to um, to start to change their perception about the world and probably and I'm sure it, that they can trigger a change in the way other people perceive things in life and they should they should see that this kind of approach makes difference and start doing the same thing in their everyday communication with others, uh, in their in everyday interaction with others and if if they show compassion I don't think anybody would uh, refuse this kind of this kind of way of communication and uh, would never uh, be negative and will um, and the change will start from there. So there is one more thing I'm uh, discussing in my book. Uh, it's competence and the way we um, we are able uh, to uh, communicate with others is very important. As I already said, uh, we have to listen more and um uh, talk less and when you listen you might learn something but when you're talking the same time as the person uh next uh, next to you uh it's it there is no way uh, to have a better communication so anyway here is the co- the competence chapter of my book underestimate the power of touch a smile a kind word a uh, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn life around. In every communication, there are two roads assumed by the parties involved, talking and listening. In order to communicate effectively, there are few rules both parties should always abide by. Learn to listen. Most problems in any conversation are due to poor listening. When this is mastered, the interaction will become enjoyable and less irritating, especially for the person speaking. If the listener is fidgeting or their eyes are looking all around, the speaker will feel they are not being taken seriously. Keep your eyes fixed on the person speaking and actually make an effort to hear what they are saying. Listen more than you speak. Do not take things personally right away. When you get defensive, you may miss part of what the other person is trying to say. Let them finish and take some time to reflect before responding. Think about this for a moment. If what the other person is saying is true, try not to take offense or cut them off. It will save you a lot of trouble when you commit your undivided attention to them and give yourself time to think before you respond. It is always smart to be aware of your behavior. When someone is so desperate to share his or her thoughts and feelings, we are all all need this undivided attention from someone who is willing and ready to listen. This might even save us future regret because of the way we acted. This tiny bit of effort can sometimes be the difference between saving and losing a friendship or marriage. Another important issue is try and see things from other person's point of view. 
after all we are not born the same and our perception differs from one another and most problems come from lack of understanding. What should we do to avoid this? Try seeing the situation. 